Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Observation. Uh, let's real quick catch up with what we were in the middle of, which looks like... Uh, it looks like we were enabling the crew trackers in UN1, UN3, and UN6. I also remember there was something to do with some coolant uh, pumps or coolant regulators or something to that effect that came up in the station alerts and there were some around, I think it was UN3. Oh, right, we had this with the old, <laughs> with the real old fashioned uh, interface. So sensor disabled. So we can do this now that the sensor is enabled. Now, does that just mean I have to turn all the blues green? Oh, I misclicked there. Oh, and now it's yellow. Yellow is the key now. Oh. Oh, okay. You see, you step away from something for a day. Sensor 1 is online and receiving data. Good work. You step away from something from a day and then you come back to it with fresh eyes and something that made no sense to you in the moment before. Sometimes you just have a moment of insight just because you walked away. Oh, this is a really beautifully lit room. Uh, and we should have... Ooh, vents. Uh, we should have a tracker in here? What is... I didn't know we could do this. I don't think I knew. I don't remember having done this. Let me turn the power on. Is there... A... Yeah, 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 yeah! Oh, cool! Jim, please, Sam. Confirming that I'm finally powering down the test cycle on the EFR reactor. I know I've been a pain in the ass about this, Jim, but it's been operational for weeks now, and the check routines have taken up so much of my time. This is time I should have spent on USES tech tests, and they're going to be pissed. What was Houston's problem with my results? I just don't understand why we're checking this over and over. Anyway, rant over. Reactor is on standby. Ready for anything. Message end. Okay, so the thing about the power caddies is I have to keep those in mind now. Like, I have to remember they exist from here on out because they are small and easy to miss and apparently they can be important. That one was an optional message, I think, but who knows in the future if they're going to be that optional. Cool. Okay. So this time it's the white squares. Huh. Nifty. This is really cool. So this That's is the, sensor two online whoops. now as well. Nearly there. Uh, so this is the game that No Code, the studio behind Observation, was founded to make. They put a game out before this called Stories Untold, which I've heard good things, and based on my experiences so far with Observation, I'm, I'm even more interested now. But Stories Untold was something like a, a short anthology horror series. And it was something that they made in the meantime, while they were trying to secure a publisher who would fund Observation's development. Uh, so they were shopping around a prototype of Observation while they were developing and releasing Stories Untold. Yeah, another power kit. Yeah! Okay, okay. There's hey, a... Sam. Message for Emma. Hey, it's me. Good news is, Jim finally pulled me off USES reactor tests as Houston want the EFR on standby tomorrow. So, out of nowhere, the captain gave us a window between shifts, meaning we get to be awake at the same time for once. A new restaurant just opened called EAS-12. Food is terrible, but it's got a great view. See you there at 0100. I'd say let's hang out at your bunk, but it's a tight fit, and that woman who sleeps opposite keeps rolling her eyes. See you later, Em. Message ends, Sam. Thanks. Oh, he said thanks. Oh, that's sweet. Didn't we find something like this before? 
we found, I, I want to say it was the last episode, we found half a schematic that was, uh, that was garbled and distorted. And I think, I swear we found one of these last time. Maybe the progress didn't save? I think it's the other one we found last time. Or it's something completely different. Uh, let's see, because it did say combine them in the memory core. And we have only two fragments that we need, so... Does this work? Awesome! Oh, cool! Okay, so now we know what to do uh, when we come back across those coolant pumps. Or the, the coolant regulators, whatever they are. Yeah, okay. Those nodes. And coolant network hub. I think we went into that. It's an offline laptop, and I can't find a power caddy from this angle. Uh, we're looking for that last sensor. There it is on the right. Whoops. Oh no, I misclicked over and then disoriented myself really badly. <laughs> it was around here, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it should be the same as the others. I wonder if they'll play with this concept uh, later and make it a little bit more involved. That's them all online now. I'm almost done here, thanks to you. Okay, fix high priority station alerts. Which I think includes the coolant, right? Yeah. The coolant network is reporting multiple errors. Recommend investigation. That could give us problems later on. Have a look at the network hub, please, Sam. Okay, there was the bright I can't orange. Window, Sam. The door is locked down, and I think there is an override active. Something atmospheric. Oh yeah, that has to be. Uh, linked to the coolant system being borked. Alright, so it's all, I think, in UNO3, right? Uh, both the nodes and the hub. Coolant network node. Wait, what is that on it? Oh, 726. I think that's, um, that corresponds to the schematic. I think there were different, uh, configurations for the nodes. So this one has to correspond to 726, I think? Adapter 726. Configuration 3, L3, which it, whoop. Uh, L3. Oh, okay, I see it. It's the stair step one. One, two, okay. Dun, dun, dun. Do, do. There we go. So, stair step, stair step, and then straight down. Looks like it's all good. It's green. I can't interact with it further now to do the rest. And I have to uh, pay attention to what the label says. That one... Okay, that's 1-8. Yeah, so we are configuration 2 for this one, L2. Down, right, down, left, left. Down, right, down, left, left. From... Bump, bump. Do, do, 
Doop. I can see the light in here flashing. It's checking the system again. Whatever you're doing, keep going. And then this last one is tucked right away up in the corner here. Oh, okay. I can't see a label on this one. So which one are you? I'm going to say that's probably not either of the two we've used. So by process of elimination, um, it is either 490 or 531. So L1 or L4? I'll try L1 first. One is one, two, three, four, five, six. Down one. Two, six. Nope, start down one. Oh shit, I lost where the turn happens here. I don't think that's it. Uh, yep. <laughs> That's supposed to go laterally instead of vertically. There we go. Oh wait, that was network offline. So, I think, wait, was that? That wasn't right. I input a correct schematic, but not the one that matches that, I think. And then, where was the... There it is. The Coolant he Network Hub. 2-2. Oh, it labels them right here on the hub. Uh, and it is indeed configuration L4, model 490. All right. So by now, you've seen some of the aesthetic and the tonal cues this takes from Alien, that kind of retro sci-fi or retro futurism, um, and the, the grunge of it. And the team behind this, a lot of them actually worked on Alien Isolation, uh, as you probably know by now. But the inspiration goes deeper. Uh, there was a retrospective published about the origin original Alien film from 79, uh, and it came out just before Alien Isolation did. Oh, wait, was it just before or just after? Yeah, I think it was just after Alien Isolation came out. And I guess this article talked about uh, the Xenomorph's perspective in the movie. And how, from its point of view, it was the one being hunted by the ship's crew. And that made it more sympathetic. So that got the team uh, that would eventually become No Code going down this road of imagining things from the perspective of what is usually uh, the antagonist, or some kind of antagonistic presence. Like the alien, like the xenomorph, or like, um, like Hal. Now we've got all the nodes online. So this, I guess, network node... That's checked, so I think we're doing all these individually now? And then we have to get the fan spinning up, which I would guess is the hub controller. Hell yeah. We did it. That was pretty cool. Good job, Sam. That'll allow us or anyone else access to the Universal Modules 3 and 4 as well as the Shenzo arm. I don't have control, but I feel like something was supposed to happen there. Like I was supposed to get uh, warped to a different camera, as I occasionally do, for what is tantamount to a cutscene? That, that jar? Eh, no. Trying to shake this goddamn bug loose like it's a vending machine. <laughs> um, I don't. Yeah, I can't switch cameras. I can't go into the OS. I'm stuck. Huh. Hopefully I don't have to redo too much. So I did have to redo inputting all of the schematics. 
for the nodes, I didn't have to recollect them. Good job, Sam. That will allow us or anyone else access to the Universal Modules 3 and 4 as well as the Shenzo arm. Oh, please don't glitch again. Yay! Still that opening. The lockdown hasn't lifted. Now saying something about contact points. Emma? We had the same problem on the EAS arm. I think whatever moved us to Saturn caused us to shake. Wait, what? Saturn? Yeah. Sorry, I should have mentioned that. I'd say it's a long story, but all I know is that Sam thinks he brought us here. Shit! Saturn? I mean... Christ, I don't know where to begin. Look, I'll, I'll head outside and try to get this sorted. I still have my suit and plenty of O2. Be careful, May. I'll be fine, Emma, don't worry. Wow, I can't believe she's gonna die. <laughs> wow. Our crew tracker is online. Where's my crew, Sam? Oh, the crew tracker. There we go. I can't believe how much she has rolled with the punches. The tracker for Jim Elias is showing corrupted data. There must be a fault, or a networking issue. Is there any location or medical info? Captain Jim Elias is located in the Russian arm. I am unable to determine his exact location. Okay, is there any biomedical data making it through? There is no biomedical data being received for Captain Jim Elias. Okay, what about Josh? Please tell me you have something on him. Oh wait, this is the symbol from the entity. The tracker for Josh Ramon is showing a weak connection. Can we get a position on him? Is there any biomedical data showing? The location of Josh Ramon is unknown. Is there any sensible data coming through for him? Why is that there? There is no biomedical data being received for Josh Ramon. I don't understand. Maybe there is some interference. May, we've got a fix on Jim. He's in the Salute somewhere. Good. Get him to sort this mess out. Tell him he owes me an explanation. Was... Wait. It looks like your cameras in the Russian armor offline. Let me get that for you now. Get a visual on the captain for me, Sam. Where is he? I know he's in the Russian arm, and that's about it. Set him through the next corridor into uh, the next module. Like, just down that way, through that tunnel. Oh, it creates a crisscross. So wait, was the thing that we ran into speaking us, uh, speaking to us through symbols that Sam should recognize from around the station? Because I know that that brick pattern was one of them. And now I'm trying to see if I, if I can see any of the other symbols from that. I'm gonna call it a conversation? Anywhere else around the station? Oh my god. Huh. I feel like I'm, I'm slowly starting to get somewhere and- Oh, another spear! And now I can't wait for the next twist to get thrown at me. I mean, we're we're still dealing with micro level problems. The small picture stuff. Oh, those are some nice lenses. Um, we haven't even really addressed the major problem here, which is what was that, and how did we get to Saturn, and why is Sam acting up like this? And there is a camera offline in the Russian arm that I can't tell them about. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Mmm, I can't wait for whatever comes next. I feel like we're building up to a big, a big, uh, crescendo soon. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.